Hi, and welcome to our next session here on component-wise boosting. So this is a pretty simple session. So we'll mainly discuss here the relationship of what we have learned so far about component, uh, component-wise gradient boosting and you know, linear models or generalized linear models. I guess there's not, not much to say in terms of learning, learning goals. That's our pretty unique and simple learning goal here. You will also see that there are not too many technical details here in this session. So, I mean, as we've already discussed, kind of one of the most simple choices yeah, for base learners in component-wise boosting would just be to use linear effects. Yeah, we could use them without intercepts, also as we've discussed before, and then use them on, on yeah, centered features. And I guess now the question is, why would we actually want to do that? So we now have a much more complicated fitting procedure, so CWB, when we already have something for that model class, right? Just let's just fit a, I don't know, normal linear model or we could fit a GLM, generalized linear model to that. Is component-wise boosting actually of interest here to us? Answer is yes, because we can exploit its feature selection property and it might be interesting to study this anyhow in terms of where does the solution converge. So the answer to that latter question is, if we let the boosting algorithm simply run until convergence, we will converge to the same to the same model. So we'll converge to the, I can call that the maximum likelihood estimator. And as we have discussed before, that's basically the same as doing full risk minimization on our linear model. If we now specify a certain yeah, loss as the negative log likelihood of an exponential family distribution with an appropriate link function, then component-wise boosting is really equivalent to, well, either a regularized or an unregularized generalized linear model to a GLM. So I guess that's kind of the interesting part, right? The regularization and the feature selection. There's maybe also something else to say. So because this really doesn't depend on, yeah, it doesn't really, the whole, the whole thing, the whole procedure doesn't really depend on us selecting anything from an exponential family. We can apply this in principle to any differentiable loss function. We could even apply this. We've done this also in some examples before to non-differentiable loss functions and then kind of just ignore the problem a little bit and keep our fingers crossed that this might even work for yeah, an L L1 based loss and so on. But usually you also do not let the boosting algorithm fully converge. And we usually do some early stopping procedure. Now we kind of might peak at a validation set and then stop the algorithm when validation loss does not yeah, significantly go down anymore. And because of this, we can also use it to regularize yeah, in a certain sense, yeah, kind of as an, yeah, as, an, as an L1 or L0 based procedure and select a sparse set of features out of our data set yeah, in, in terms of which of these features help us driving down loss the most. Problem is the resulting model usually doesn't really have well-behaved standard errors for our coefficients. It's a bit harder to provide confidence intervals for the coefficients or prediction intervals to run tests on that. Can try to bootstrap that. They are also more complicated procedures which are usually from this family of post-selection inference procedures. On the other hand, alternative procedures like, like the lasso and so on have similar and associated problems. And of course, running yeah, an L1 regularization on top of an LM or a GLM is of course a viable alternative. So we have run one example here. So we have we are now fitting a logistic regression model. So GLM, you could also say a GLM with a Bernoulli distributed response, yeah. Linear model with an associated log loss function. Yeah. You can see this here, but this should not now be anything new to you. We've used that before in the whole lecture at various times and we've also looked at normal gradient boosting with such a such a loss function. Now of course we still have to kind of transform our score predictor here our f potentially into yeah, a probability function so we can do that by as usual squashing it through the logistic transfer function so stuff like this here or we can also do st stuff like probit regression by taking the CDF of a standard normal distribution. All of that is pr pretty much orthogonal to this here. We have studied this before. Here's our yeah, final slide for this session. So this, is, this shows this parameter convergence for our 
component-wise boosting model. So we are running this here for about 10,000 iterations, so for a pretty lengthy time. And we are plotting how the parameters, the associated parameters of our features evolve over time from the component-wise boosting model. You can also see here at the end, marked with these axes, you can see where the parameters are from a normal fit of a logistic regression model. And you can clearly see that if we let the boosting algorithm run long enough, then we will converge exactly to these values, to these values and yeah, to the same model. What you can also see is how the parameters kind of, yeah, well, you can see how the parameters behave over time, but you can also see from these curves here that at some point, yeah, some parameters actually enter the model. So you can, you can see that for the green guy. Yeah, so here, a couple of new parameters come into the model. Now, if we would stop the model somewhere here, or if we would stop the, the boosting iterations here, some of these parameters would still be left out. You can early stop, you can create a sparser model. I could now also plot, plot the loss developments next to this, or you plot the validation loss next to this. And then we kind of could discuss whether we would rather yeah, prefer a sparser model or something that's yeah, more complete in terms of included variables, okay? And usually this is done by not really looking at, at in-sample loss, but rather by looking at an out-of-sample validation set. And then if loss doesn't really go down enough for us, we would stop. Or if we really, really prefer a sparser model, we could, we could stop that even before, but that I guess that would be a little bit yeah, less usual. So you can use that and you can use that kind of as a, you know, it's an interesting alternative to something like an L1 regularized model. Usually we should not expect to get hugely different results. If we would compare you know, an LM or a GLM with an L1 penalty you know, compared to a component-wise boosting model.